All right, up next. Up next is an interview. It's a teleconference call with Miss Tony Braxton, and this this is uh, yeah, yeah. you're gonna hear me literally like ten minutes into ten. What was it ten about ten minutes, fifteen minutes into this uh, conference, sweet Aaron? That if uh, memory yeah, serves me yeah. correct, so you'll you'll hear you'll hear me be as nervous as you could possibly be uh, uh-huh. talking to Tony Braxton. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Can't I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie. You. When, when I you. asked her. When I asked her my question, I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous. So, so what? So what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what? Y'all can feel his again. nervousness. Yeah, Don't you, you can ever feel talk it. about us again. Hey, hey, nah, nah, I ain't gonna. Hey, I was nervous when I interviewed Don too. So come on now, like these certain women would okay. do certain things to me, and y'all would hear me say, <laughs> like, you know, towards the end of the interview, like, I don't know about y'all, but Tony Braxton music does something to my soul, like it does. So y'all gonna, y'all gonna hear it. Your voice was kind of brings kind of joy. Joy, 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 well, I'm brain. <laughs> you damn right. You damn right. You damn right. <laughs> so, hey, not nah, because nah, my voice wasn't cracking, but you could, like, if y'all listen to me do interviews... <laughs> If y'all listen to me do interviews, y'all know like this was a moment. But you know, here on this in, in this section right here, Miss Braxton is talking about her upcoming tour. She has an album that she's worked she's been working on with Babyface, so they've gotten back into the studio to collab. Um, you know, their first single should be coming out literally at the end of this month, and yes, it will be heard here on uh, Branded After Dark to debut it. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to have her live. But we were able to be a part, as Next Legacy family, we were able to be a part of this uh, teleconference call that took place uh, two, three days ago. So you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear the half portion of it, and then, um, and, and and just like I said, to me, it's always big when you can be able to have somebody like Tony Braxton, or at least be a part of the media that she's allowing and stuff like that too. Because mm-hmm. as we all know. It ain't easy trying okay. to be able to lock and load these guests because we can always say, hey, you know what, we all schedule it, and then they got some other shit that they got to do. So it's it's right. always it's always good to be able to keep the communication lines open with her team. And this is the start of the Tony Braxton interview on Next Legacy Radio. Hello, our <laughs> You're coming back home. I'm away from home. <laughs> I am. It's my hometown. <laughs> now, um, our column, we kind of like to pick people's brains when they're coming to town on some places they like to go to for our readers. While you are here, um, or when you are here, what are some of your favorite restaurants? Are there any places you're excited to recommend to our readers or even check out yourself while you're here? You know, it's just so many new restaurants since I've been here in five years. I think I'm going to have to rediscover Vegas again. and. I mean, I, one of my favorite places to eat are, is in Vegas. I used to go to the Bellagio, and they had a restaurant there. That's not there anymore, so they've given it a whole new facelift. So I'm excited about coming here and rediscovering it again. So maybe they could tell me where I should go out to eat. And up next, we have Lexi Lewis with Destination Tampa Bay Magazine. Your line is open. Hi, Tony. Hi, how are you? Good, dear. Um, hey, got a question for you. In your eyes, to be considered one of the greatest singers of all time, what criteria must be met, and who would you consider to be one of those people? Now, this is excluding yourself, of course. <laughs> so ask, ask, ask me the question one more time. Sure. Um, to be considered one of the greatest singers of all time, in your eyes, okay, mm-hmm. what criteria must be met and who would you consider to be one of those people? Who, who, who do you think uh, would be one of the greatest singers of all time, according to what you think the greatest singer of all time, those, those skills and, and so forth that they possess? I think the greatest singer of all time, of all time, I'm a little partial to females because I'm a girl, is Ella Fitzgerald. Mm. Because she dared to break the barrier. She made you look at her voice and not her color. In addition, she made music international. She made it where it wasn't your color made you a category. She just let her talent show. She was disciplined. And in the era where, you know, as African Americans, you have to go through the back door. And she did, She just did it with a smile on her face all the time. But there was a discipline with it, like five, six, seven, twenty shows a week. How do you do that and smile every night? I just thought she's my favorite of all of them. Does that help? Did it answer? No, nothing. Of course, also, besides that, there's, 
are there any other criteria like, you know, this, what sort of discipline that you might have? I mean, those were skills and things that she showed, you know, by going and having a smile on her face every day. But what do you think, what else do you think um, a, a successful and, and great singer of all time, uh, what characteristics would you think they would possess? You have to know your strengths. You have to know the difference between dreaming and illusion, and that's part of being a successful. And being disciplined doesn't mean, oh, I wake up every morning at 5 o'clock, I drink eight glasses of water. It's knowing your limitations in your lane mm -hmm. and knowing how far you can push yourself. I know the industry has a lot of sex, drugs, and rock and roll with them pegs that have that reputation, but it's knowing how far you can go with it. Well, anything in life that you do as a single because you don't want to stress your instrument, Oh, God, I know I have to do this. The image that goes along with the talent, merging the two together, is also a discipline. People don't even un understand what that means. But the images you decide to take on, be careful because if you try to change it, people are resistant. So, and so, I could be 20 minutes talking about that one part. So, but um, For me, I, I understand my voice. I'm trying to understand my body and merging the two together so I can be the best performer that I can be because it's important to me to know that I'm a songstress and I could jump and dance, which I wish I could jump and dance more, but I know for me it's more about my voice than the actual dancing. And also because I'm 40-something now, I'm not 20. <laughs> He's expecting that I'm in my 40s now. I have to change my show and change my style of singing a little bit to make it current, but not eliminating who I am and how I got here, my style of singing, I guess. Does that help? No? Maybe? Kind of? <laughs> Our next question comes from Jody Berry with Radio 1 WSXC. Your line is open. Hi, Jody. How are you? Hey, Tony. Good to hear your voice again. You were here uh, in the early 90s in the Carolina uh, on the campus of the UNC and put on a magnificent show with you, Babyface. I think Boys and Men was on that show as well. But you're, okay. coming, back, you're coming back to the Triangle uh, August 18th. Now, last year, you were about ready to give up music. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Well, put it on the back burner, so to speak. And Babyface kind of, you know, talked to you. What did he say to you to convince you to, hey, you got a lot more singing to do, sister girl? The first thing Babyface said to me is, it's not time. And I know where you are because I've been there before and so many other artists have been there, but you can't let that stop you. And he understood what I was going through. I had, you know, my illness I was dealing with. I, was, I think I was just been a little depressed just with everything, not being able to control my life like I once did accepting that I'm older than my 40s and the industry has changed. Do they still like me? Do I still want to fight as hard as I did? And he told me that's part of your story, too. Your story isn't always going to be smiley faces, Tony. you got to get up and do it, even when you don't want to sometimes. And this is your era of not wanting to. This is when you've got to plant the seeds again and start over. And that could be challenging, but you got to do it. So he really talked to me, and he and I have such a great relationship. I'm still, and I'm going to be honest, I'm still nervous. I'm still a little bit unsure, still cautious, but I just decided, if, you know, if you don't, but I need guts for it, and, you know, it's okay to be scared, but the guts are going to help me through it, so wish me luck, guys. Oh, you're going to be fine, trust me, you're going to be fine. And speaking of which, also, Babyface, you and Babyface are teaming up to do an album. When, you know the fall release date when the album's coming out? Well, you know, the single comes out just now. They thought the single comes out at the end of this month. They pushed it out, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. I, I'm going on tour, you know, like a, like a three-and-a-half-week show. And the reason I'm doing this is because I haven't toured in five years since I was first diagnosed with lupus. And the doctor said, you know, you'll never be able to perform again. But this is my tester to get my body ready, to get my confidence up, to see how far I can push my body three, four shows a week. Can I do it? Yes. I've done one-off shows once, twice a month, but never consistently. So I feel good about it, but I, getting myself ready to get out there and be Tony Braxton and Babyface. And next we have Leslie Case with the Baltimore Sun. Your line is open. Hey, Tony. Hi, uh, Leslie. How are you? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, good. How are you? I'm good. You're from Baltimore. Yay. Hey, yeah, so, of course, my first question, um, how often do you get to come back to Maryland, and, and what, are a few, what are a few of the things you must do when you come back home? You know, I don't get home as often as I like to, but when I'm there, the first thing I have to have is a crab cake. Okay. No one makes them like Maryland, so I go to Phillips or wherever I have to go to get them. Everyone has the best one, so you're never wrong. And, of 
course, yeah. visit my family. So it's going to be great to be back in Baltimore, the Baltimore D.C. area. It's been a long time, way too long. That's great. Um, while I have you, I mean, do you have specific goals with the upcoming album with Babyface? Is it about hit songs, reestablishing yourself as an R&B presence, or, or what, really? You know, baby, to play something you can't think about trying to do hit music. You just have to think about doing music and what you love, and let everything fall from there. And the goal with Tony is to not to reinvent yourself, but for you to discover who you are. You forgot who you are, and you have to remember that again. So I have him with me, just like he's holding my hand through this process. I feel great about the music, but this is one. The, this is the first time in my career that I'm not thinking about, is this going to be a number one song, number two, are we going to sell platinum? I'm not even thinking about that. And it's, I have to be honest, it's weird to think like that, because you always, I know the business of the music business with everything I've been through in my life, I kind of really know it now. So it's, uh, it's an adjustment to look at it as just art. I think when I first came into business, I did, I was just so excited to be in it. But now that I know about it, it's taking that business aspect away, it's refreshing because while it's, it's really, it can be about making music and enjoying yourself, and I haven't enjoyed myself in so long, it's nice. That's great. Thank you, Natalie. Can you hear me, love? You guys keep cutting off. Can you hear me? Oh, the good, ever you are loud and clear. And our next question okay, is from okay. Rebecca Leonard with the Boardwalk Journal. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm good, Rebecca. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for taking your time to speak to all of us. Um, I'm going to take you back to the beginning. Your debut solo, solo album, uh, Tony Braxton, was released in 1993, and obviously that was the same year Whitney Houston released the Bodyguard soundtrack, and Mariah Carey and Janet Jackson had number one albums. What was it like to come out with your debut album and find yourself at the top of the charts surrounded by all these powerhouses? Uh, it was a wonderful dream. You know, I love Whitney. I wanted to be like her in the sense of her success and to even be in any way compared. Of course, I was excited about it, but it all seemed surreal, and I didn't enjoy it like I was supposed to enjoy it. I think everyone has the same story, trying to enjoy it. And this is my 20th year anniversary. I'm kind of excited about that. Oh, oh that's God. amazing. It also tells my age already now, but I've been in the business for 20 years. But Janet, Mariah, all of them, they had a big impact on my career. You know, they were the girls that we all wanted to be like. And the greatest thing, they were all about the same age. So when you see it, it's like, oh, wow, this is, this is great. I still look up to them. Right. Now, what can we expect to see from you in your live show at the Taj Mahal on, on August 24th? You'll be here. You know, I am going to have fun this time. <laughs> the last few times I've done some one-off dates, and it was just about, oh, you know, I have to try to work, you know, work testing my boundaries, and this time I'm really going to do it. I'm not going to tiptoe around it. I'm going to do it. Um, I'm a little cautious because, just because you have a lupus, you have to be a little cautious, but I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to be like an 18-year-old and have fun, get my body ready, get my mind ready, and really engage myself with my fans. Oh. I'm more connected to them because I, I love performing, so I'm going to call 20 people on stage this time and have them participate and entertain with me. Oh, we look forward to it. Thank you so much for that. Our next question comes from Damian Prout with Black Ops Entertainment. Your line is open. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. Uh, first, I would like to say that um, I really appreciate um, how you support Autism Speaks. Uh, reason being that I'm a parent of an autistic child. Your message and your work with Autism Speaks was very, very inspirational. And I appreciate the work you've done with them. So I really want to say that first, first off. Uh, secondly, yeah, we're looking forward to you coming to the Triangle on August the 18th, and um, we're looking forward to the new album. But my question for you is, do you think you see yourself, once you get comfortable being back on stage with your music, do you see yourself moving back over to the Broadway stage? You know, I love Broadway. It's one of my favorite things to do because you get to entertain and I get to dabble a little bit in acting. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this show proves, I can prove to myself that I can do shows again, that I can perform, and I can go from three or four shows a week to maybe six or seven or eight to do Broadway. So this tour for me is really getting my body ready to, to get active in my career because I've kind of been a little suppressed in it or just taking baby steps and being too cautious in what I can and cannot do. And sometimes you, you just have to push yourself and do it. So I'm going to try. And then from this tour, hopefully 
baby face should not be ever going to tour. So we're talking about doing like a six-month world tour. But this tour is so important on so many levels for me. But I think I can do it. I think I'm going to be okay. Yeah, well, I think you can do it. And I think your music is truly missed. The quality of your voice that's really missed in the market. So I think you'll probably be able to pick up where you left off if not better. And we're really looking right. forward to you coming to the Triangle area. One more quick question. Um, do you see yourself uh, doing any shows with your sister Tamar? You know, my sister Tamar, her career, I'm so excited for her. She has a talk show out right now. Her single's out. Her album's about to be out. Her schedule's going to be really busy. And I think for her, she's going to go out with some other people. But I think before it's all said and done, it will be a Braxton family tour. I definitely oh, know it. Right. So we all come yeah. together and... So I'm really excited. We talked about it. We were talking about doing like a play of our lives, how we became the Braxtons and putting music to it. So that's on the back burner, but it's something we're definitely all working towards doing, me and all my sisters. So wish us luck on that, guys. Okay. Well, we're definitely looking forward to that, and I wish you the best, and I hope to see you on August 18th. Yeah, and Yay! Woo-hoo! <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Have a good one. You too. Guys, can you guys hear me? I just want to apologize because my voice is very deep. I'm trying to raise it so I won't frighten you. Right now, I sound like the author from The Golden Girl, <laughs> and I'm trying to get it up. So, okay, guys, just so you know, okay, we're good. And next, we have Chris Jordan with Gannett, New Jersey Newspapers. Your line is open. Hi, Ms. Braxton. Hi. Thanks very much for taking out Prince. a few moments. Is your name Prince? Did she say oh, Prince? Oh, Chris. Oh, Chris. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, Chris. I write for a couple papers here in Jersey, including the Asbury Park Press and the, um, the Home News Tribune of New Brunswick. I see you have two shows in Jersey. We lo- we're, we're loving that. I wanted to ask you, uh, two shows in Jersey, is it because you c- kind of want to give us a little support post-Sandy here as we're kind of continuing to rebuild the uh, area, not just the shore, but there's some communities close to New Brunswick that, that are still rebuilding after Sandy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that travesty and all the family members, I offer my condolences, but I'm glad that I can be the Omni Entertainment that they chose to entertain them this time of year, so I'm excited about that. And one of the reasons that we're there twice is because there was a demand to come twice. Nice. So that made me feel really happy. I was like, oh, my God, they picked me. <laughs> so it's going to be great just to, you know, make them not think about their day, whatever they're going through. If there's something not so positive, I can maybe make them smile. So one of the reasons I do what I do because I love performing and making people happy. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Next, we have Charles Madison with Next Legacy Radio Station. Your line is open. Ms. Braxton. Hey, Charlie. How are you? You should say Charles, right? I called you Charlie. I'm sorry. You can call me whatever you want, sweetheart. It is okay by me. (laughs) Okay. How are you? Are you good? I'm doing good. I want to first off thank you for all the music and all the moments that we all have as fans first and knowing that a God-given talent like yours um, comes, in my opinion, once every in a while for us to be able to get everything that we can as far as your voice and the way that you make us all feel by just being yourself. It's definitely inspiring. So I definitely want to thank Thank you for that. Thank you. So sweet. My question as a supporter of your music and as much as you've, uh, you know, you see how social media is, Twitter, Facebook, th- uh, online radio stations, things of that nature, um, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of it? I know it could be a blessing and a curse, but, um, you know, just give the, you know, give us a, your opinion about just online media. Online media can be a great thing for me as an entertainer, and my music is how I choose to entertain. It makes it instantaneous that you can hear my songs, or I can even hear other artists' music, or I can watch a movie as fast, as quick as I want. That part is great, but sometimes it, you get so comfortable, you forget the rest of the world is watching. And right. for me doing a reality, reality show, maybe sometimes I forget the cameras are rolling. So I can imagine if you're typing something or getting caught up in a cause, you forget that millions and trillions of people are watching you and listening to you and reading your words, and that becomes their ruling for you. So sometimes you can get tried and convicted by something you were just thinking in the moment. So that's the negative of it, but the positive thing is that it allows the world to become one, and we can all get to know each other. 
that's the great thing about it. When I think of my kids, they get to have friends that they may do social media at school that connects them to kids in China or kids in Africa. So the world aren't just limited. It opens the world up to everyone. That's what right. it's great about it. Right, and real quickly, just want to once again say, um, just continue. I'm, I'm glad you're 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 back in the studio working on music. I'm glad you're working with Babyface. I'm just glad that you um, are extending your legacy to to us as fans. And I don't know about everybody else, but every time I hear your voice, it does something to my soul. So <laughs> keep oh, doing that. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I needed that today. Thanks so much. You're the best, Tony. And I'm following you on Twitter at Tony Braxton. So FYI. You are. <laughs> You are Charlie at Charles at. I'm going to tweet you right now, just so you'll see who I am. So. Okay. At I am branded. I guess you. I am branded. Yes. Okay. Love you, Tony. Okay. Thank you, Charlie.